Hey guys, in today's video we are going to be looking at the dark past of Mike Evans, and everybody nowadays loves a great story. Without further ado, here's the dark story of Mike Evans. As we all know, Mike Evans won a ring this year for the first time in his career, and let me tell you, it was well deserving. Mike Evans is one of the NFL's best wide receivers. He is the only wide receiver in NFL history to start his career with seven straight 1,000 yard seasons. That's something Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, and Terrell Owens never accomplished. Mike Evans is already on his way to GOAT status for receiver. That is, if he keeps it up at the pace he's going. And if you don't believe me, well, if Mike Evans just duplicates his first seven years in the NFL for his next seven years, he will be third all-time in career receiving yards and fifth in receiving touchdowns, and he will also have two Super Bowls. What's even more interesting than Mike Evans' future is his past and the long journey he took to be at this level and the toll it took on him not just physically but emotionally as well. Michael Lynn Evans was born on August 21st, 1993 in Galveston, Texas and he was born the son of Heather Kilgore and Mike Evans Jr. And doing my best not to be rude here but Mike Evans grew up with not the best influencers because Mike Evans' mom, Heather, was only 14 when she had him and his father, Mike, was 19. There is clearly a ton of red flags in this story already and this couple would have another kid a year later and that kid would be Mike Evans' sister, Kia Evans. Mike Evans' parents would go on to nickname him Mikey at a young age and it looks like it still sticks to this day. Mike Evans would go on to say his dad would treat him well and would talk to him about football and basketball all the time and encourage his kids to excel at sports. But as we all know, Mike Evans Jr. had his fair share of problems. He would continuously hit Mike Evans' mom and continuously cheat on her with other women. Heather would still stick by his side through all of it. In 1998, however, Mike Evans' dad would be sentenced to three years in prison for felony assault on another woman. This would leave five-year-old Mike Evans and his four-year-old sister, Kia Evans, to be raised by a 19-year-old single mom. And although they were poor, Heather worked extremely hard to put food on the table and give her kids the best birthdays and Christmases. Luckily, Heather didn't have to fully pay for rent because her and her kids lived with Heather's mom and brother. While Mike Evans Jr. was in prison, Heather told her brother and mom about what Mike would do to her. And the both of them did not take it well, as you can expect. From ages 5 to 8, Mike Evans had a pretty normal life. But that all started to change after Mike Evans' dad was released from prison in 2001. For about the first year after release, Mike and his dad would get along perfectly, like any ordinary father and son would. They would play catch with the football and watch TV together. But Mike Evans' uncle and grandma clearly hated Mike Evans Jr.'s guts for all the times he abused Mike's mom, Heather. On the night of October 6, 2002, Nine-year-old Mike and eight-year-old Kia Evans would wake up to the police telling them they had to leave their home as of right now because it is now a crime scene. Mike Evans Jr. would be pronounced dead on the street of their home by a gunshot wound to the head. Now you might be asking yourself, who could take away a kid's father like that? Well, it was Mike Evans' own uncle, Sam Kilgore, who did it. Sam would admit to it and say it was out of revenge for the abuse that his sister told him about. And for nine-year-old Mike Evans, he was livid and even wanted to kill his own uncle. Football was a great story to try and move on from his inner demons, because just like that, Mike Evans was the man of the house. Sam would be sentenced to 38 years in prison and would even murder again while he was in prison. This would give him a life sentence already to his 38 years. Anyways, moving on from Sam, Mike Evans would remember how passionate his dad was in getting him to do sports and use that as motivation. Mike Evans would do push-ups at the memorial park 
to try and get over the death of his father or just to motivate him even more. Mike Evans wasn't just a great football player in high school, he was a phenomenal athlete in everything he set his mind to, that was including basketball. Mike Evans would eventually accept a scholarship to go play for Texas A&M and get used to here in second place because throughout his college career and early NFL career, that is what he was known for. Mike Evans only played two seasons at Texas A&M and he put up over 1,000 yards in both of them. What a shocker. Despite his huge success at Texas A&M, Mike Evans was considered to be the second best receiver in the country, trailing behind Clemson's Sammy Watkins. Mike Evans was even second in the spotlight at Texas A&M behind Johnny Football Manziel. Mike Evans would get drafted to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the seventh pick in the 2014 NFL Draft, and nobody was talking about it because the media was too busy talking about how Johnny Manziel fell to pick 22. And it's easy to forget great stories like these when the sports media is focused around one player like it was with Johnny Manziel in 2014. Now fast forward through the 2014 season, Johnny Manziel is now second in media coverage and is still being talked about after his god-awful 2014 season. Sammy Watkins had a good rookie season, putting up 921 yards and 6 touchdowns. Mike Evans put up 1,051 yards and an outstanding 12 touchdowns. But Mike Evans was still second place. Yep, that's right, because Evans finished second in Offensive Rookie of the Year voting behind the one and only Odell Beckham Jr. Which I'm not complaining, it was clearly well deserved. I mean, he put up over 1,300 yards and 12 touchdowns in three less games than Mike Evans. In 2015, Mike Evans would improve under a new quarterback, but would still be second fiddle in the press behind OBJ. Hey, but this time around, Johnny Manziel is out of the picture, literally. In 2016, Sammy Watkins would leave the picture, and Mike Evans and OBJ would continue to go at it for best wide receiver in the 2014 draft class, and they would go at it for a while. In 2018, Odell would become the highest paid wide receiver in NFL history. Meanwhile, Odell would start to regress after being traded thanks to injuries and no chemistry with the quarterback. As for Mike Evans, well, we all know the story. Mike Evans would not have a single down year in his professional career, and would have great chemistry with every quarterback they threw at him. Mike Evans and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would win the Super Bowl this year to make for a great story not only for Mike Evans, but the Bucks franchise as well. Also, I feel it's important to mention that rather than demanding to be the highest paid receiver in the NFL, Evans said he's willing to take a pay cut to benefit the team. As you can see, that is a true team player right there. Mike Evans went from doing push-ups on his dad's grave to being a world champion and overcoming the odds and being the best receiver from the 2014 draft class. This is hands down one of the best stories in the NFL, and it couldn't have happened to a more deserving guy than Mike Evans.